Good morning, or uh, good afternoon rather. This is our noonday broadcast. This is something that we hope to do every day. Um, just a little short thought at noon, at the, uh, the time when the sun is at its highest and at its brightest, that will be a good time where we come before the Son of God, who will be hopefully at its highest, at its brightest uh, at this moment. So we just want to take these days when a lot of people are at home, um, off work, not able to get to work or whatever, but just to have these moments when we can just be together and think about God's Word just for a moment and pray together, just as a little focus for our day. So this is something, as I say, it's going to happen at noon each day, except on a Sunday when we'll have our Sunday service. As we begin, I've got a problem for you. Um, my son was helping a colleague's son do some maths problems. I don't know if you're good at mathematics or not, but I've... Uh, I've got a problem here for you. It's uh, 25 equals 11 minus 7a. 25 equals 11 minus 7a. So uh, I, I got the whole of this one just to see if I could do it. And uh, I don't know if you remember from your school days, 25 equals 11 minus 7a. You've got to find what the value of a is and how you can do that. It's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Now, if you're at school or you're already mathematical, you'll think that is so easy and I know what it is. And as I worked it out, it took me a little while, but um, kind of got the answer sort of. Um, but if you're not familiar with this or it's a long time since you've been at school doing this kind of thing, this would be really hard. Some of you might be thinking, I haven't got a clue what he's talking about. It's a bit of a problem. Um, I'll give you the answer to this tomorrow give you tonight to work on it, 25 x 11 minus 7a. But it's a problem, isn't it? And there's a problem in our world today, and the problem is we know, it's on the news all the time, the coronavirus. Everywhere you look, newspapers, people talking on the street, um, our world has got a major issue, this coronavirus. Um, it's a problem, but what can we do with it? It has created uncertainty created fear because fear is just as contagious as the virus itself. And as we watch the news, as we see television programs, as we read the newspapers, we can build on that fear. And as we focus on fear, it just simply grows. That's just the way fear works. It grows. But there's a problem. Is there any way we as Christians, a, a Greystones Presbyterian Church or wider field, is there anything that we can do to solve that problem? Is there an answer to that problem? Well, I think there is, and the Bible holds many answers to many problems. And I'm going to read something from um, Philippians chapter 4. It'll be a verse that you know really well. Some of us have lived by this verse for many years. You maybe have written it out and put it on your wall, and you may have it as a picture somewhere. It's a very famous verse. It's a well-known verse because it's a verse that speaks to all of us. And I think particularly in this situation today, when there is lots of fear, and fear can isolate people. So what is the solution? Well, Philippians chapter four says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Do not be anxious about anything. Anxiety and mental health issues are all over the place these days. But at this particular time, um, it is becoming more dominant in our, in our everyday life. Many people have got mental health issues, are fearful, are anxious. So why does Paul write in Philippians? Why does God say to us, don't be anxious. Does he say don't be anxious about this or that? He says don't be anxious about anything. So what is the solution? Well, it's prayer. It's prayer and that was found to be true way back in the days of uh, King Jehoshaphat, which I thought was a really great verse. He is the king of Israel back in Second Chronicles chapter 20. This is what the king says. If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment, or plague, or famine, or the coronavirus, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name, 
and we will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and you will save us. King Jehoshaphat is saying, whatever life throws at us, to this place, to your temple, where God presents himself, and we will pray. That was the answer. We will pray. And that's what Paul picks up as well. He says, pray about everything in every situation. But how do we do that? There's a very important word straight after that, with thankfulness, with thanksgiving. I want you to pray in every situation with thanksgiving. Sometimes that can be the bit that's lost, isn't it? We're very good with our lists of requests. Lord, would you do this, 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 this? Would you take away this virus? Would you sort things out? Would you do this? But Paul's saying to do these things with thanksgiving. Psalm 100 says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. This is the gateway into God's presence. And fear, which can isolate us, cannot exist alongside God. And so as we come with thanksgiving, it opens a way into God's presence. And where God is, there is no fear. There is no anxiety. There is a peace that passes all understanding. On Sunday, I was talking about something similar. I was saying from, maybe you take Psalm 103 and see how David talks about all the blessings that you can find in God. And this is something similar. It is saying to us, we need to, we need to be cognizant. We need to be uh, conscious of all the blessings in our lives. And as we come with Thanksgiving, we take our eyes off the problem off the fear and we focus on God, our Lord, who loves us with thanksgiving in our heart. So maybe as part of what you do today, you could write down all those things again that you have to be thankful for. Not forgetting about the problem, but putting it to one side and realizing the, bl the blessings that we have on our God. He has blessed us in millions of ways. So make, maybe make a list or speak them out loud. What are the things that God is one of the things we can thank God for. Such a beautiful day. That's a good place to start, isn't it? Being alive, that's a great place. So many blessings upon blessings upon blessings. So come with him with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. For thanksgiving opens the way into God's presence. And into God's presence is where we want to be. Because what it does is, just as he says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. This peace is, is not natural. It is supernatural. You can't really explain it. It's a God thing. When you come to our Lord and you pray and you enter into that place of his presence, there is a peace to be found there that passes all understanding. And then it says, which transcends all understanding, and this, these great words, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This peace will guard your heart, will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful promise? So in these crazy days, where we don't quite know what's going to happen from day to day, as we come into his presence by praying with thanksgiving, and as we enter into his presence, those anxieties go. The antidote to fear is his presence. Isn't that what David wrote in Psalm 23? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid because you are with me. And that's what we want for all of us. We want the Lord to be with us today and each moment of each day. He goes on to say, and this is again something we can do later on. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the peace of God will be with you. That's a promise, a promise to you, a promise to his people today, a promise in the midst of a problem, a problem that dissipates all our fears, because to be in his presence brings peace and fear is banished. Would you take that with you today? 
and think about those things. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to pray. I'm going to lead you in prayer. And maybe as part of that, we can think of things to be thankful for. So should we do that? I'll just leave a, a moment's quietness where you can rehearse in your heads the things you can be thankful for. And then we'll bring our petition, we'll bring our list, we'll bring our, our prayers to him after that. So let's join together to pray. Let's all pray. And Lord, we thank you that you're a God that we can come to. You're not a God who's remote. You're not a God who hides. You're a God who is easily found. You tell us if we seek you, we will find you. And so, Father, we come to seek your face. Father, you know us. You know our fears and our worries at this moment. You know our history and you know our future. You know our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that you know us so well. And so, Father, we want to come with thankfulness, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And so, Lord, in just this moment's silence, we want to bring to you the things we have to say thank you for. So let's do that. Father, we've got so many things to say thank you for and to praise you for. And we pray, Lord, in the course of today that we'll do that. And Father, over the course of these next few days and weeks, Lord, we pray that we'll become more thankful. Lord, sometimes it doesn't come easy to us. Father, we pray that you'll train us to be people of thanksgiving and people of praise. Father, thank you for your amazing love. Thank you that you're a wonderful teacher. And what the disciples said, teach us to pray. Lord, continually teach us and teach us again until we learn. Father, we want to enter into your presence. We want that peace that passes all understanding. We don't want to be anxious about anything, even in the midst of, a, of an awful pandemic in our world, Lord. We don't want to fear or be anxious like the world. We want to be yours and know your peace. Know your presence to enact your promises. So Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. And we pray, Lord, for those who are at home today, maybe feeling anxious, maybe feeling lonely, those who are frightened, those who don't quite know what to do, those whose jobs have been lost, who have fears for the future, those who are struggling with a family or young children, Father, we pray that you'll be their comfort and that you'll be their peace. Father, we pray for those who are the experts in this field, Lord, and we pray that you'll help them to um, work hard and act wisely and find a solution, Lord, to this issue. While we pray for our leaders, for our governments, Father, give them wisdom. It's a hard time for them. Who would want to be in their position? Father, we pray your spirit will enable them to do what they must do. And that we, as citizens of the country, Lord, would do what we must do as well. And in this time, Father, we pray that we'll pull together like one big family, looking out for each other. But Lord, you are our Father. We are your children. Father, without you we're lost. But with you, we need not be anxious about anything. So Lord, thank you for hearing us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, thank you very much. We'll hope to do this again tomorrow at noon. If you'd like to tune in or tell some of your friends about it, just a short time of reflection and encouragement, hopefully. Have a great day and be blessed.